I just really wanted to hear first what, what brings you into career services. Okay, well, I'm just like really stressed out. I've got all this homework going on. I mean, I've only got one year left of school, and all of a sudden I'm thinking maybe I'm in the wrong major. Mm -hmm. um, Psychology is great, and it's what I thought I always wanted to do, but now that I'm taking my business minor classes, I'm thinking that I could be really good at that too. And it's what my dad was always um, good at and has gotten a lot of success out of being in business and he's always thought that I would do really well there like I've grown up meeting his friends and I guess because I'm a people person he sees me as someone who could be really successful in business and as you might know business people can make a lot more money than some people in psychology mm -hmm. and so he really pushes that he can he is constantly looking up salaries of like counselors and saying you'd make so much more money if you were in business so I guess I know that I could be good at that, and I'm kind of thinking maybe I should change my major, but I think that I would be here for forever. I'm stressed out. So a lot of just being torn yeah. between different mm -hmm. kind of venues, both different majors, but also because of salary or family pressure. Or mm -hmm. I mean, I'm hearing a lot of kind of different factors that are playing into what you said first. I'm just overwhelmed or stressed. Yeah, and like in addition, like even more things like I don't want to go to school for five more years after this to get my PhD in psychology. So I'm just kind of like, if I can make more money in business and go to school for a short amount of time, why would I choose the other one? Mm -hmm. And so, but I know that I would really like being a psychologist because I love working with people on really tough issues. So I'm kind of just in this weird spot that I've didn't expect to be in in, the in my junior year, and I feel like I have to make the decision yesterday. So, so also torn with the amount of years that you would have to stay to finish an undergrad in business and switching, but then that call cause and effect. But then if you go stay with psychology, you're gonna have to continue on, and you yeah. see yourself continuing on. Yeah, and even if I can con continued on in business, like. There are programs for an MBA, which is like the highest that you can get. Like, it, you'll make good money if you get an MBA. Um, there are programs like one year. So it's like so tempting looking at that versus looking at four to seven years for a PhD. Mm -hmm. And still going back to the money involved in being able to accrue a different salary. Yeah. Yes. And right now my parents are paying for my undergrad, so like I guess... If I switched my majors and was here longer, I wouldn't be paying for as much school as it as I would if I went into my straight into my doctorate. That four to seven years of paying for myself versus one year of an MBA later on. So the cost to me, what I would actually be making in the long run, it's just a huge, I guess, pros and cons list that I can't sort out. So feeling stuck, mm -hmm. kind of overwhelmed by the amount of pros and cons for each side. Yeah, very overwhelmed and not kind of sitting here going, I don't know what else to do. And even beyond that, like, if I chose one way, where would I even go from there? Like, there's so many options. It's such a broad field both ways. If I chose business, like, that's so many things. Mm -hmm. And if I chose psychology, I'm learning that that's so many things. So, so the decisions don't stop. And that's overwhelming. And I saw your face, like... Mm -hmm. I just want that one decision. Yeah, I mean, like it. I know I feel pressure from my parents, and I always always put the most pressure on myself, like more than they ever put on me. But um, so I guess it's just I feel like I should have been more prepared than this by my junior year, and should have already made this kind of decision. So I feel like most people have made that decision, feeling like you should have this together. Yeah. And, and what are your mom and what are your dad thinking and others thinking about you yeah it's feeling like you should have it together yeah I usually do that's the weird thing like all my whole high school experience I knew exactly what I wanted and I knew like, this is the next step and I felt really on top of things so to be so completely the opposite of that by my junior year in college is just not what I I, I feel like I let myself down so this is the first time you really felt like that you mm -hmm. have to even not live up to kind of your own standards. Yeah, and it's a lot of stuff I put on myself. Like, I don't think my parents have ever said, you have to finish college in four years and you are probably, you need to make X amount of salary. But um, I think that comes from what I assume they want from me. Mm -hmm. 
and then so that is self expectation based on what I think they might expect. <laughs> mm -hmm. So both what you expect of yourself, but what you think that they do want mm -hmm. for you. And yeah, and I guess I'm, it's not completely evidenceless. Like my dad has said things like. Um, this lifestyle you live right now with us, if you want to live like that, you need to make quite a bit. Yeah, like, he bought a boat, and, like, he's like, if you want to eventually have a family and, like, be able to buy things like a boat, um, you need to make more than what a counselor would make at 40000 or, lo or less, <laughs> mm -hmm. especially starting out, and just stuff like that. And I, who knows if I could be completely happy without that stuff, I'm sure I could be, but like the fact that he puts that in my brain, it like that stays there, or has stayed there the whole time that I've been thinking about what to do. So weighing kind of what lifestyle values you want, yeah. and yeah, what you're used to mm -hmm. versus what you think you can be happy with. Yeah, and my mom is a lot more focused on do something that's gonna make you happy because she's gone through so many jobs and what she's found is that she gets a lot out of the ones she likes, even if it pays less. Mm -hmm. But she has the luxury to find that out. My dad is the, is the, ma the majority breadwinner. Mm -hmm. So I guess she kind of had the luxury of playing around and trying different jobs, whereas my dad has worked his butt off to get where he is and will work his butt off to stay in that position. He can't just like, oh, I'll try something else that will make me happier. Mm -hmm. Intends to stay there because the salary that he makes allows us to live outside of his work. I guess is what he's most focused on. I have to go through all that to get the salary to get us here. Mm -hmm. um, but so I do want see. more. I do want more than what my dad like. I see him come home from work all the time, really stressed out, and I would like to enjoy my work. But I see where he's going with. You see the way they approach both job and happiness, mm -hmm. it sounds like, um, and that approach is a little bit different for your dad. Work mm -hmm. is something to help secure the lifestyle yeah, yeah. with family, and that provides mm -hmm. happiness, whereas for your mom, it sounds like she's fulfilled in kind of both capacities. And yeah, and I think, I think maybe if she had been, I mean, they married so quick out of my mom graduated early to marry my dad at the time that she would have been normally graduating. So I think that she's never had to go through some of the stuff my dad had to go through with the tough jobs you didn't want to get to, something you did want. Mm -hmm. um, so I really appreciate both my mom's and my dad's view, and I guess I can't really pick which one I want to focus on. Mm -hmm. And so th going back to that other layer of, of kind of the stuff, Mm -hmm. so not only is it just your self-expectations, but not really knowing which kind of set of values within work and lifestyle. Yeah, which one do I want? <laughs> that you want more. Yeah. Because I see way. the value in both, and I guess that's a huge problem. I mean, that's what brought me in here is that I see the value of being in business, and I see the value of being in psychology. I see the value of how my dad views the world, and I see the value in how my mom views the world of work. So I guess I just feel very like, I don't know, I feel like I just need to pick one and try it. If it doesn't work later on in life, I would do something else. But that seems so risky and not calculated and it goes against everything I've ever tried. So, so not only the feeling of feeling like you always have to have it together, but that you should make the right decision. Yeah. And it's like, first time. Yeah, and I know a ton of adults who aren't doing now what they originally studied, so I don't know why I'm so stressed out that I have to have it figured out right now. Um, my dad is not doing what he originally studied. My mom is not doing anything close. She studied journalism and she works at a gardening shop. Mm -hmm. And she's very happy. So it's just strange that I feel, I don't know what made me feel like I have to have it together mm -hmm. and get the very first job I have is the one that I meant for or mm -hmm. anything like that. But I do feel that. So on one hand, logically, you can sit here and say, I know that it's going to be okay. Yeah. Because yeah, my I'll, major doesn't equal. Yeah, I will survive everywhere. But I guess I just feel like right now or the recent past is when I should have been 
at least making a decision whether or not it was like the right one. And now I feel like I'm backpedaling. Mm -hmm. And still feeling that mm -hmm. there's the piece of you that should have it together. Yeah. And this shows and that's maybe like always, a crack in that. That's always for me. It's not even just major related or college related. I think I've always been like, I should have it together more than I do. Very hard on myself. So this has been driving me nuts. It's probably been like three months where I've been like juggling whether or not to change my business minor to a second major. That's the other option I didn't even tell you. I'm so close to finishing my psych major because I'm a junior and it's a pretty easy major that I might as well, if I'm going to be here longer, might as well finish that too. I'm mm -hmm. just double major. But then business major makes you double major within that. It makes you pick too, like logistics and marketing or something. Mm -hmm. It's just really crazy sounding to me. And I don't, I guess, I don't know, maybe if I got my psych degree, I don't even know if I could make it in the business world if that's what I decided if I wanted to do. So that's scary too. So even the feeling of, I could be successful within psychology, I know that I would enjoy that work, I could do that, mm -hmm. but not have the salary that necessarily, and a lot more school weights, and a lot more schooling. But with business, I'm not even sure, like you said earlier, what path I would take within business. And then, can I, can I make the cut there? Yeah, or it, would I even, I, since I just think, uh, since I'm good at the skills that it takes to be someone in business, like that makes me think I'd be good at it, but I don't have any real hands-on experience. I've never like shadowed or even been to work with my dad or anything. So I don't know if that's something, I do know with psychology and working one-on-one -on -one with people and like working through problems, I know that that's something that I would enjoy because it's something I know in my life. <clears throat> but with business, I don't know that in my life. I don't like know what it would look like. So it's kind of like I could jump on that and get on board, but I'm scared because it's unknown. At this point, you don't even know if you can see yourself yeah. there or what that would look like, what Ryan would look like mm -hmm. in the business world. Whereas just through life, you've been able to see what Ryan would look like in the psychology world. Yeah, I can picture like kind of that, even if it's exhausting at nighttime, you're like, wow, I had a really tough session today or something, I can see myself being like, but I feel like it went somewhere. But I can also see myself like enjoying not having to do that every day. Like just working alongside coworkers to get something tangible done and it's not something that kind of lingers emotionally. So like, I guess that's what kind of draws me is like I'm scared that um, I would get emotionally burned out mm -hmm. doing that. And But I could probably sustain just being around coworkers and getting things done for a lot longer. Seeing this more task oriented and mm -hmm. working with coworkers and maybe more project oriented. And like teamwork, yeah. Um, How does uh, it? But the emotional side of psychology and, and feeling drained and, and but also like really uplifted. So like I would have like huge roller coaster kind of phenomenon. So that dual kind of both fulfilled in it, uh, but also the chance of just like burnout. Yeah. You know, could you sustain in that? Yeah, and like what would happen if I couldn't? I guess a lot of like my fear comes from just what would happen if. And that's where I, I would guess a lot of adults end up where they are. Like they tried what they originally studied and were like, no, I'll try something else. And for some reason I can't just be like, make a decision now and you'll get where you're going when you get there. It's kind of like I'm trying to anticipate every bridge that I haven't crossed. And I'm scared of failing to yeah. get some other yeah. bridges yeah. and not living up mm -hmm. to that original self-expectation. Yeah, and like I don't absolutely don't want to disappoint my parents, but I think it would take a lot to disappoint my parents. They're already very proud of me. Mm -hmm. But that's like a little bit of uh, a fear of failure aspect. Not wanting to disappoint. Not wanting to not measure up. Yeah, it's probably more of that. Because I don't think, as hard as I work, I don't think that disappointment would be the word that comes to their mind. But like not measuring up to what they expected. And that makes it that much tougher. Mm -hmm. um, 
maybe and my sisters are really brilliant younger so I like feel like I just set this bar for them and be a good example but also they're so smart that I think that they're gonna like that they will have it together when I did it you don't want to be the one child that, yeah the one that, that didn't that couldn't figure it out yeah and at first so I had no idea of knowing it <laughs> like that's such a silly fear it feels like because like they're not even close to this yet, and they, maybe they'll go through the same struggles, but um, I guess another fear of the unknown, like I guess I'm scared that they will just breeze through it all and do really well, and their first job will be their favorite job ever. I'm scared that you're going to be the only one that struggles, mm -hmm. uh, and then your parents will be able to say, mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Ryan couldn't get it together. Yeah. So then it's that pressure that you have to have it figured out so that not only your siblings can then go through that same track. Then maybe I could even be, I think if I had it together, it could be more helpful as to help them get on that track if they aren't on track. I'm thinking, I might make a mistake here, and then I might be the only one that's really struggling with this. Yeah, yeah, and I think that um, because they were so proud of me in high school when I did have it all together, I think that's kind of like my map as to what I need to do to get that same proud feeling from them. You really want mm -hmm. them to be proud, and you want them to celebrate what yeah. you were able to accomplish. Yeah, and I think it would be nice if, um, in addition to pride, they were like she was like focused and knew what she wanted, even though I feel like it's very common to not know what you want. So still wanting them to know that and being able to recognize that Ryan has it all together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what he says. Stay intact. I was able to figure it out and was able to do it and be successful, whatever that looks like. Especially because like in high school I had their help and now I'm on my own. So I don't want the only factor difference to be that they weren't here. I want to be able to like stay intact and keep it together without them. This is almost like your first test of yeah. can I do this on my own? Test. <laughs> yeah. Can I survive uh -huh. without them right here? Yeah. And not being able to decide between psychology or business is kind of the first feeling of I'm going to fail this test. Yeah. Yeah, and like I felt a little like I lied to myself acting like I was so sure about one decision with psychology and now that I'm backpedaling and oh maybe I should have done business this whole time is like okay now I'm really thinking about it and maybe freshman and sophomore year I was just acting too I was just like not thinking about it as much as I should have been, not really like grappling with what I wanted. I just kind of picked a major. So afraid that you wasted time mm -hmm. and that you should have been focused more on this. Yeah, because like my roommate Rachel was a psychology major and she would have been a great counselor, but she decided, okay, she was thinking about it from the get go. So freshman year, she had never even declared psychology before. She was like, no, I need to find something and went to career services and came here and got so many answers and decided on a business. So I just feel like I didn't take from that example. I wasn't in the same level as her. I feel like I could have gotten a lot. I could have gotten a clearer picture earlier on had I been focused on it so when she was. still feeling like, what if? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if I would have wrestled with this two years ago? Yeah. Would I be sitting here yeah. right now? Or I could have just been sitting here earlier. But I guess it's scarier as a junior because you're supposed to be getting ready, getting all your credits in order for graduation and stuff. So the overwhelming what if, we keep coming back to that. Yeah. What if yeah. I would have made this step earlier? Or what if mm -hmm. I choose that one and what happens five years down the road? Yeah. It sounds so silly talking about it. Like, I'm glad that I came to talk to you about it because it, it, at least I know how I see it because I haven't said it out loud to anyone. But it just, like, I am aware that 
people make a decision and then they can change their mind. Mm -hmm. That is something that happens. But I'm just so, I, for some reason, want so badly to make the right decision the first time. Or the um, one that would make me happy. Still trying to figure out what that is mm -hmm. and what that looks like. Yeah. What would, I guess, what are the factors of a job that would even And if you want the job to produce the happiness. Yeah, or if it's just like what my dad does, work to be able to have X amount of money and then use utilize that to like create experiences and happiness. But throughout it all, still coming back to that overwhelming sense of fear of failure mm -hmm. and fear of not measuring up. Yeah, and not doing it right like the first time. So that would be fair. But needing to have it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Both for you, but for family, yeah. parents and siblings. Sounds like roommates. Oh yeah, I, I mean I'm constantly so hard on myself that I am comparing myself to my roommate Rachel and it doesn't help that she does the same thing. Like we are constantly like almost it's not competitive because I celebrate her celebrations and she does for me too. It's not like I want her to do worse, but I am definitely like, she had a 4.0 last semester and I had a 3.8. I need to work on that. <laughs> so like it's it's a comparison level, even if it's not competitive, like I want her to fail or anything. And I want to win. It's just that she's very high performing and I want to stay there too. Um, so even the loud grades to be another benchmark. Yeah. That's a little less so, though, because thanks to her, I've kind of had to get over that because she's so brilliant, and I'm always more like the blessing than this, and mm -hmm. she's ace. <laughs> so I think it's more about uh, my family, being a good example of my sisters and meeting unspoken expectations from my parents. And unspoken expectation for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Newly spoken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And how those add into these layers of the decision. Yeah, because I guess I have to kind of sift through and like let the ones that are less important fall through and be like, okay, so these are the things I want. Which of these paths is going to help me get there more? Mm -hmm. um, just wish I had done so still some regret. Mm -hmm. Yeah, regret that you didn't start this process. And like a little bit of just, I guess, regret or just um, feeling bad that I didn't have it together enough to notice that that's what I needed to be doing, something like that. Um, I'm usually so forward thinking that as a freshman, I feel like knowing myself and knowing how forward thinking I was, I, sh I feel like I could have mapped out the sophomore years when I needed to really figure this out. Um, so last year, and like I'm here this year, just not working on it, I feel like I'm behind the, the, in the game. So maybe some of the feeling of you already made the mistake. Yeah, just like backpedaling, like I said. I'm trying to get back to, I can't rewind time, but trying to make up for decisions that I kind of skipped over. So part of this even goes back to freshman, sophomore year. In a way, you were already starting to not measure up. Yeah, because you didn't think far enough in advance to think, oh, I might really enjoy this minor so much that I want it to become my major. Mm -hmm. Should have felt like people could have predicted it. Yeah, and especially because I'd grown up with my dad telling me I'd be great at business, so why wasn't I considering it coming into school? I remember applying for colleges. I only looked at education programs and psychology programs in speech pathology, no business. I don't know why. I don't remember when the shift happened that it became more like, I probably my minor, just taking those classes and seeing that I could be actually good at it mathematically and stuff. Um, but I didn't start my minor until this year. So it just seems like I wait too long. <laughs> For you, that's kind of the first notch of failure in this kind yeah. of set of just fear of it. Even like when I, I guess, having my first business minor class and realizing 
hey, this is kind of fun, I can get into this, and I'm good at it. That's when I realized I should have done this a year earlier because it started, to, the gears started shifting already that maybe this should have been more than a minor. So the first taste of kind of skill in the classroom um, could have been a kind of indicator for you mm -hmm. beyond just your dad telling you that you're going to Yeah, it would have been more, it would have been come more from me, which is why, like, when I was looking for colleges, I never really listened to that part of my dad because I was only focused on, like, things I had experienced that I was good at. And psychology was because I was that friend in high school that everybody would come to for advice or to, like, talk about and I could help them think of it differently and I just always had so much fun kind of talking about thinking with people and thinking about their thought processes and um, just jumped on that move that I had a psych AP teacher and because I got to practice little skills or like see more like see her practice it but I would volunteer to be the client she was a counselor and I was like I could do that I could do what she's doing um, but I never had like a business class where I would do the same thing. So it kind of goes back to what you were talking about earlier, where you've had more of a taste of psychology. Mm -hmm. Way more. Um, but the business didn't come until this year. Yeah, because I had never even like been to work with my dad. My only taste of being good at business is when he like introduces me to his work friends, and they all think I'm smart and a great people person, and they compliment dad on how he raised me. But I'm like, okay. But for you, <laughs> being a great people person could have fit into either. Could have fit into so many things. On those paths. Yeah. So I just kind of, I didn't, I guess I did it. It wasn't hands-on enough. And so junior year is when I finally got hands-on. Oh, this is what marketing is. I could be really good at that. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just people skills. Mm -hmm. So. It's so like I have more than people skills, I guess. I have more of the uh, puzzle already put together. I would just need pieces of the major, the rest of the classes. Um, and I kind of looked at psychology similarly when I came into college was, I already have these skills that I know of because of working with friends and talking with friends. And then like, I just need these other stuff. Other pieces. And so I need that from freshman year on, actually junior year in high school is when I took my first psychology class. So that's when that started. So it's just been there for longer. Four years later is when I started putting together the puzzle of business. Yeah. And so a part of it is the psychology has been here a little bit longer, and so it's harder to even imagine walking away now. Oh, yeah, and that's the like whole double major thing. I feel like it would be just a waste of my time if I had just left. I think I have three more credits I need to do. In psychology. So. It's not ready to give up psychology, no. uh, but not sure you want to invest the extra there. time <laughs> yeah. of having majors in both yeah. and be prepared for the paths in both. Yeah, the extra because time and money that it would take to do schooling for to be a psychologist. It still goes back to what does post undergrad look like? Yeah, and what do I want it to look like? I have no idea. Right now, I guess that decision needs to be made first because right now I'm trying to make the decision of the step before that. I, I guess I really haven't thought about like have, haven't thought about it future backwards. I've only thought about like make this decision now so that you can make the next decision. But I guess it. I could pick, if I could just once and for all pick like an end goal, it would be a lot easier to make the decision unless I went right now. So starting to think that maybe even now you might want to be more forward thinking. Yeah. And think about, which is crazy, I feel like I already can. <laughs> but I guess, but with more of the factors that I haven't been thinking about that you and I have talked about today, like, um, it's not a be all end all, and like, I, the sift, I need to sift through the things I really want more than the other things that I think I have to have. And so allowing the sifting mm -hmm. to kind of start to happen. 
Yeah. That's why I came here. I need help with that because it's not very, it's really muddled to me, mm -hmm. especially with the values of my parents being so different and expectations of myself seeming so, um, like, really important for now. Really urgent, that's the word. Um, so I guess that's what eventually led me here is that I wasn't able to, I am not so far able to, like, get that going. You don't feel able to even start that sifting process. Until today, I didn't even know some of the things that would be in there. So I didn't know what could or couldn't be more important. Mm -hmm. so. Well, we have about 15 minutes left today. And so I want your last 15 minutes to be, you know, what you need it to be. And so we can start talking more about the sifting. Mm -hmm. um, but I also want you to be thinking about kind of maybe some next steps. What do you, what do you kind of need to be doing yeah. in between today and next week? Uh, to continue that kind of sifting process. Mm -hmm. um, so I want this last 15 minutes to be what you want it to be and need it to be. Okay. Um, I think one thing that I thought of when I was talking about how I don't have any hands-on experience of the business world is maybe I should try and shadow somebody in this area. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to figure out who, maybe one of my business minor professors can help me find someone to shadow in a couple different areas, maybe like marketing, I don't really like logistics, but so pretty much marketing is where I'd want to go if I did business. So maybe find someone who's in marketing or a marketing executive to follow around for a day, kind of maybe build on my puzzle or just it could give me a clear picture of what I don't want to do. So I've, I've gotten a lot of really great experiences from things that help me decide that that's not what I want to do. And that's kind of like the sifting process. I've interned last summer for my uncle at his uh, financial agency, so I know I don't want to work with finances. That's one, like, that's one of my only experiences in business, but that's like, there's so much else. So I feel like maybe one of the only ways I could decide if business is right for me is doing things like last summer, but in more areas. In more areas. So starting to allow yourself to kind of see what you would look like mm -hmm. in that field. What and my options even are. And does that fit for you? Yeah. Because that experience last summer allowed you to see finance. Nope, not yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, not going to fit there. Um, but in order to even start to really be able to see yourself in marketing, mm -hmm. you kind of have to see it more firsthand and start to kind of experience the field. Yeah. And I think that this analogy I keep using was sifting. I think that's one of the only ways I can see what is most interesting to me. And I know psych I know counseling psychology is going to stay in the basket because it's something that I've been interested in and I already have puzzle pieces to for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, so you already kind of feel like psychology has been sifted. Yeah. The, yeah, the kind of branches of where it could go, I think I've already like really explored that because I've been thinking about it for so many years already. But um, I haven't done that with business, so I think that that's probably where I need to start. So you're wanting to start to say a little bit more of, okay, what are the standout things here? Mm -hmm. um, what are kind of the really important parts of things that seem enjoyable or that I could be good at, or what would even make the money that I'm trying to expect of myself? Um, I guess just learning more, gathering information. So gathering more information, but still going back to it sounds like what, what we would call self-assessment. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the things we encourage students to think about in career counseling is thinking about how your major, how your career path fits with kind of four areas. And so thinking about skills and what you're good at, mm -hmm. um, interests, what you like, yeah. values, how does time, <laughs> salary, uh, level of education, and then personality, what comes natural to you. And so, I mean, you've talked about all of those factors in both. Yeah. Um, and so it sounds like for you that the shadowing experience would start to allow you to even experiment some. Yeah, I think that that's probably, areas. like you were saying earlier too, like in what would I look like? Um, I would be able to imagine more if I had hands on experience or had at least observed what the job is. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of picture myself doing that daily or I see it and I'm like I can't picture myself doing that. 
um, kind of like what my uncle does with, uh, he's a financial planner, and I would, he would allow me to sit in on meetings, I'm like, this is not what I want to do. Um, it had aspects of what I like to do with people, mm -hmm. kind of counseling them, but you're counseling them on money, which I didn't really want to do for other people. <laughs> you don't see that as being an area of kind of topic or subject area that you would want to be working with people? Not like only that talk about it but like if that's the only thing I ever talked about every day with every client that would stink. Um, so I guess I need to kind of maybe more than one person so I have multiple options which is kind of in the business world to start chatting with people or um, help with the project or something. Mm -hmm. So kind of opening yourself up to kind of multiple experiences. Yeah I think it it's, I feel kind of silly that I've been trying to make this decision without that. Like, I don't, just haven't had those pieces of the puzzle, but I'm trying to see the end result. So still feeling a little bit like, oh, I should have done this earlier. Yeah, or like, what, why didn't I do this? Like, why did it take coming to career services to, it's what you guys are here for. I'm okay with it, but. It's still an expectation that you should be able to do this on your own. Mm -hmm. Or just why didn't I make the decision on my own to come here earlier? So I just really feel like I'm playing catch up <laughs> and backpedaling. Mm -hmm. So still going back mm -hmm. so that it sh this should have happened earlier. Yeah, kind of getting stuck in the uh, why mm -hmm. didn't I do this? Um, and yeah, very stuck. But I think it's helpful that now I see that I need through our talk that I do feel like there are steps I can take to feel more prepared to make this decision because until now it just felt like something I should have already decided and now it's like, oh, I am missing a couple pieces to the puzzle. So, so feeling a little bit more confident that you can make some of these steps. Mm -hmm. um, and I have something tangible that I can go do. And needing, needing a task. Yeah. Uh, to feel like that's going to help you move out of the pro-con list mm -hmm. um, into experiencing something to start to maybe bring some of that pro-con list to life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and seeing it is going to help you. Yeah, and I think um, that's the only reason that psychology is definitely something that I've already sifted through and feel confident about that I would enjoy is because I had tangible experience in the classroom. Without that tangible experience, I probably would it be too abstract. I couldn't. I don't know if I could really see myself doing it. So, but for those, it's less about tangible experiences and more about those values mm -hmm. of time in school, yeah, and salary, yeah. Um, but until you kind of start to figure out um, if your skills and interests are big enough in marketing. Do you feel like you can even like my values and my personality, or my skills and um, money making? Like what trumps what? It's kind of what I'm. So, kind of the conflict of skills, conflict of values, kind of in both camps. Mm -hmm. um, but starting to allow <laughs> yourself to experience those more would get me somewhere. You feel like it's gonna help you. Yeah, I would let me take at least one step. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem as like it doesn't feel like I'm trying to do something or I'm mad at myself for not doing it in the past. It's like, oh, hey, something I haven't done that I can do. Um, this is good. It's a step. So not allowing yourself to become paralyzed. Mm -hmm. It's productive. It's gonna get me to this closer to a decision. But trying to see the value in that. Mm -hmm. Really take that step that you feel like, regardless, it's going to move you forward in either direction. Yeah. yeah, whether it pushes me towards, okay, I don't like business, I'm going to do psychology, or, wow, I can really, really see myself doing this. Mm -hmm. I should pick up a double major. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Still feeling a little bit like, oh, if only I had done this a year ago. Mm -hmm. That's really the only regret piece I'm feeling right now. 
because this is so valuable and it's so helpful if I had done this a year ago. I mean, I didn't have my minor a year ago, but if I had thought ahead enough, I could have already had some experience that would tell me if I even needed to do the minor. So it still save me some time. <laughs> so still some of that self-doubt of and shame of Mm -hmm. Lost opportunities, kind of. Yeah. Done this earlier. And kind of those self expectations again of not not living up to your own expectations, right? Right. So a lot of it's coming back to that for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. But I am excited that this has kind of led somewhere for me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go talk to my professors. So email them right after this. <laughs>